Hi everyone. Not long ago, I made a scene for this wolf character. Behind the wolf is a forest, but when I saw this reference image, I realized my scene still lacked realism. In the reference image, there are not only green pine trees but also some yellowish trees mixed in, making the forest look more colorful and realistic. So, I decided to improve this aspect. First, I added a noise texture as a mask to change the color of the leaves. Let's change the color so it's clearer. However, I found the noise too random and not very controllable when I wanted to change the color of a specific area precisely. Therefore, I used a new technique. With this technique, I can decide where the color will be changed by adjusting the position of an empty object and also change the range by adjusting the size of the empty. It's very convenient. Let's see how this effect is achieved. Let's start with a new project. First, create a new plane and go into edit mode to scale it up. We create a new material. In the scene, create an empty. Next, create a texture coordinate node and choose empty as the object. Then, we display the object coordinate mode. We get a coordinate where the position of the empty is 0, 0, 0. Next, create a vector math node and set the mode to length. This gives us a black and white image with a center brightness of 0, gradually increasing outward. Then, add a color ramp node and invert the colors. We now have a circular mask and we can adjust the feathering range of the mask. We can also adjust the position and scale of the empty to modify the mask's position and size. To make the effect more intuitive, change the display mode of the empty to sphere. We see that the boundary of the empty matches the boundary of the mask, making it more intuitive. Okay, let's see what else we can do. The edges look too round, so I want some random variation on the edges. Let's add a noise texture node adjust it to a relatively suitable size, and mix it with the previously made nodes, setting the blending mode to linear light. Add another color ramp node and adjust its values. Now we have an edge with details. We can also try adjusting various parameters to achieve different effects. Okay, next, we use this configured mask to blend different colors. We can also add a new mask. How do we mix these two masks together? We see that the areas of low brightness are the ones we want to keep, so we add a math node and set the mode to minimum. This will preserve the areas of low brightness. We can add multiple ones, each adjusting the position and scale of each empty to achieve different effects. Now I have added five empties to create five different masks, and I have combined them into one pattern. To keep the nodes organized and easy to call, we can group these nodes into a node group. Select these nodes and create a new node group. Press Ctrl plus tab to exit the node group. The texture coordinate node can also be simplified by hiding unnecessary options. Name this node group scope. Now let's solve a new problem. There are currently five vector input ports on the node group, all in a connected state. When I disconnect one port, you will see the other masks disappear. Why does this happen? If some ports are not connected, the entire mask will turn black. Inside the node group, if the external vector port is not connected, the length result will be zero. And since we use the minimum mode to mix several masks, so the entire mask turns black. If we perform a minimum operation with a value of 1, the effect will be normal. So we need to add a logical condition. If the length result is 0, use a value of 1. If the length result is not 0, 
use the length value. Add a math node, set the mode to compare, and set the value to zero. This results in a white mask. Copy this node to the node connected to the vector port, but the effect is not correct. The correct result is when all places are black. Change epsilon to zero and the effect is correct. Epsilon represents the range. If we set value to zero and epsilon to 0 0.5, values between negative 0.5 and 0.5 will be output as 1. So, when we set epsilon to 0, only places with an absolute value of 0 will output a result of 1. Then add a mix node, using the compare result as the factor to mix the length value with 1. Check the output result to see if it is correct. The effect is not quite right, so go back to the node group and set epsilon to zero. Now the result is correct. Copy the same nodes to each link node so that no matter which vector input in the node group is disconnected, there won't be any problems. Hide the values of input ports of the node group and this node group is complete. Next. When you need to use this node group, you can append it to your Blender project and use it as needed. It's very convenient. You can apply this technique in many situations, such as creating a wet ground effect. You can use empty to control the position, giving you great flexibility. This concludes the tutorial. I hope you find it helpful.